12 important things to know before taking the London public transport. London's interconnected subway, rail and bus systems make it home to one of the world's most comprehensive public transportation networks. Here are some critical details you need to know. 1. We will not accept cash under any circumstances. You can buy everything with money except happiness, so the saying goes. However, having cash on hand at the bus stop will not get you a ride. A contactless card, Oyster card or station ticket will be required. Despite first impressions, this has proven to be a wonderful boon. People no longer have to waste time searching for spare change and many instead waste time searching for their Oyster cards. 2. The Tube System in London the unique London Underground emblem, a red circle within a blue frame reading Underground, makes it easy to identify tube stations. Fare zones 1 to 6 on the Underground map out all of London in radial fashion, from the core to the outskirts. The more time zones you pass through, the higher the overall cost of your trip will be. Entry and exit barriers are standard at tube stations, and tickets may be purchased from vending machines or attendants. If you're a tourist in London, it's best to stay away from the underground during the morning and afternoon peak hours on weekdays from Monday through Friday. The typical times are in the morning, 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. and the evening, 5 to 7 p.m. 3. Underground, the Tube The Tube, as the London subway system is more often known, has been in operation in various forms since 1863, making it the world's longest continuously running underground metro system. Across its 270 stations and 250 miles of track, the London Underground now transports over a billion people every year. While the name implies otherwise, less than half of the track is really located below ground. You can locate an underground station within a few minutes' walk of almost everywhere in London, and a train will generally arrive within 10 minutes. The subway is a fast and convenient option since it bypasses street traffic and parking problems. In general, services are available from 5am to 12am and as of August 2016, 24-hour service is available on select lines. You may use this site to look up travel schedules and organise your trip. 4. You may have your travel cut short for no apparent reason. The statement, this bus finishes here, might be an unpleasant way to end a trip. It's quite frustrating to have your trip cut short before you reach your final destination without any explanation. Do you know whether there are road repairs? Is there a car wreck ahead? Have they just called it a day for the driver? The truth may always elude you. You may have to take buses to reach where you need to go, but your money should be refunded in full if that happens. 5. Choose a seat as distant from other people as you can. When possible, choose a seat apart from a neighbour. Public transportation in London is not known for its warm and fuzzy body language. In order to avoid getting too near to other passengers, many people place their luggage on the seat in front of them in the hopes that no one would sit down. Avoid sitting next to someone if there are empty seats around you, else things might become awkward. 6. Transportation by rail Of course, I've previously mentioned three rail-like services, but if that weren't enough, London also has genuine railroads, including suburban rail that connects the city centre to the suburbs and fast trains that connect London to the rest of the nation, and the world. Heathrow, Gatwick and Stansted, the three main airports serving London, are all easily accessible by train. How to travel to and from London's airports is covered in detail here. 7. Overground If you're familiar with the underground, you'll find the overground to be quite similar, except it operates above ground. Yes, much of the underground exists in the daylight too. Sorry, but that's the way things are. However, the overground was just established in 2007, making it far younger than the underground itself. Prices on the overground are identical to those on the underground, and the same price zones apply. Since overground and underground services are in the same tariff zone, most stations do not need you to touch in and out while transferring between them. However, there are a few exceptions. The overground emblem is very identical to the underground design, with the exception of an orange circle and, of course, the name. 8. Tram Trams, operated by London Tramlink, connect the neighbourhoods of Wimbledon, Croydon and Beckenham in South London. Although the tram system's four lines and 17 miles of track don't make it the largest in the world, they are heavily used. To pay for a ride on the tram, riders only need to check in with their Oyster card or contactless card reader upon boarding, exactly as on the bus. When disembarking, a touchout is not required. The hopper pass may be used on trams as well. 9. 
having trouble figuring out proper window etiquette. Making the decision to open or close the bus window requires a lot of guts. The consequences of your choice will seem enormous, but the reality is that you cannot satisfy everyone. Asking everyone on the bus whether it's okay to open or shut their window would be weird, and some people would disregard your request anyway, so only ask a few individuals you're sitting near. Unfortunately, this doesn't always work well, and fights over the window may break out. When one person opens a window and the other responds by getting up and closing it, the first person has started a window war with the second person. 10. DLR, Docklands Light Railway, London. There are a lot of ways to go about. Commonly abbreviated as DLR, the Docklands Light Railway, or DLR, is an autonomous rail network that serves the Docklands District of London, which is located to the east and southeast of the city's core. There are no human conductors on the DLR, which is the fundamental distinction between it and the aforementioned train systems. If you're travelling between East and South East London, you'll probably end up utilising the DLR, which connects London City Airport to the rest of the Tube network. For instance, the XL, the site of many major conventions and trade exhibits, is easiest to get by this method. The DLR is included in the same ticket zone as the Overground and the Underground in London, as well as some subway stations even have DLR stops inside them. It is not necessary to make contact into and out when transferring from the tube towards the DLR, whether you are paying with an Oyster or Chip and Pin reimbursement. However, many DLR terminals do not have limitations, so you should always remember to hit in and out or use a paper ticket at the beginning and closing of your trip to avoid overpayment. 11. The centre entrance is not permitted for boarding, most of the time. Please use the front entrance to board the bus. The back door is off-limits. Sometimes passengers will utilise the front door, however this is the main exit. It's alright to do this, however it's not okay to enter via the centre door. There are nevertheless significant deviations from the norm. If you require a wheelchair, the most convenient entrance is via the centre door where the ramp is located. Another exception exists. Some of the older three-door TFL buses have returned to service. Each entrance has a card reader, so you may enter via any of them. 12. Taxis the iconic red bus is only one of London's many memorable forms of public transportation. There are several well-known vehicles, but the black taxi may be the most well-known. Hackney carriages have been transporting Londoners and visitors alike since 1662. Its drivers are required to memorise the knowledge, which is essentially a comprehensive map of London that allows them to get about quickly and easily without using maps or GPS. Riding in a London black taxi is an adventure in and of itself. If a cab is nearby, you may just wave at it and the driver will pull over to pick you up. Overall, getting about London is not only possible, but also inexpensive, fast and straightforward. Use an Oyster card or contactless payment card to zip about on a Santander cycle, enjoy the sights from a London bus, or save money on peak hour London underground prices. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell.